Hello and welcome to this edition of Legislative Update with State Representative Tesha Buss of Woodstock. Uh, my name is Tom Ayers. I'm a senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard newspaper in Woodstock, and I'll be hosting these programs over the coming weeks. Uh, welcome, Tesha. It's nice to see you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. Excellent. We're really pleased that uh, you're participating in this program during this legislative session. I'd like to ask you today about um, some issues that are front and center with the legislature this session and that I know that are very uh, uh, dear and important to you. And that's the whole issue of um, child care accessibility in the state and also programs that benefit uh, children's and family services. So I'd like to talk with you a little bit about um, some of the things that might be on the horizon in the house around those areas um, in, the, in the coming weeks. Yes, childcare is very important to me. I sit on the education committee, so I have not been in the in-depth testimony of the human resources committee, but I did um, briefly look through the RAND report, which came out, which talks about how to fund childcare. And mm -hmm. it is not a small price tag. Um, they're looking at $645 million to fund it with $162 million of that on the backs of families. So it is a significant program to launch, and it is going to take some time for this to roll out. I mean, mm -hmm. I would think around five years is wow. what they're currently looking at. So we'll, you know, we'll start and, and then it will it will ramp up. You know, they're looking at how to fund it. Is this going to come from a single source payroll tax? Will this be a conglomeration of taxes like ed education funding is? Mm -hmm. um, will sports betting, if that gets passed, you know, help this? Uh, that all really remains to be seen. Um, I know the Democratic Party would really like to see this happen, but happen responsibly and incrementally. Um, mm -hmm. paid family medical leave is also really important this year. And so we've got to be really careful about the, the burden that we put on our taxpayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. This funding that you referenced in the RAND report um, would go to existing child care facilities, but also to expand the child care network in the state. Would that be accurate? That is accurate. Um, it, it's it's more that it's immediately helping us figure out what the financial need is with the mm -hmm. new way that they would like to uh, have the subsidies come into a family. So right now we use a different program and you income qualify and then you get a sliding scale reduction. This would be similar, except for that the the benefit cliff, the you know uh, the income qualification would be a little greater, so that we can get more people the help that they need. Right now, in order to get full childcare subsidy, your income is so low. I don't even know of a single person that could afford to hardly live around here for that, uh, let alone be able mm -hmm. to you know to pay for their childcare. So this will really help, not just the lowest of incomes, but even our middle income families. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about the issue, uh, and we hear this often, you and I have had conversations about it as I have had with other child care uh, providers and advocates, um, the, the, the salaries, the compensation that certified child care providers receive um, they have to they have to you know go through education they have they have school uh, loans to pay off and yet the starting wage for uh, a certified child care worker is actually quite low um, and and this puts the child care centers at a disadvantage in terms of recruitment and retention um, are, are there things in place or beginning to get in place to it uh, attend to that issue. Yes, and honestly, COVID opened the door to receiving higher salaries faster than this system could even bring forth change because mm -hmm. folks realized we we can no longer make 13, 14 or 15 dollars an hour at a 40-hour work week where there is also no benefits whatsoever. 
Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times people were paid so little that they could be on Medicare, um, which in essence sort of helps the childcare not have to provide it, but we also don't want folks making such a low wage that they can't afford, you know, traditional health insurance. And it, mm -hmm. and it keeps people, it, it, it makes people stay poor. That's not what we want mm -hmm. as, as Vermonters. So mm -hmm. that is definitely being addressed in this report because mm -hmm. there's no way that if we pay childcare workers, what they should be paid with mm -hmm. a benefits package that we can afford to do that on the backs of the families that we currently have. Mm -hmm. And I think, and what I think everyone hopes is that with this kind of childcare statewide system, we should be bringing in, uh, the, the, the study suggests between 600 and 2,800 workers re-entering the workforce when they get their children in care. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. going to be significantly contributing to a solution that we desperately need as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing that I've discussed with child care advocates in the region and perhaps even with uh, you yourself is um, Vermont's regulations for certifying uh, child care providers, even at the highest level of child care center directors, uh, differ markedly from those in our neighboring state of New Hampshire. Um, and this adds to some of the recruitment um, uh, issues as well and retention issues as well. So my question would be, is the state and the legislator uh, looking at uh, some of those certification regulations and trying to bring them a little bit more on par with other surrounding states? You know, I haven't listened to the testimony of the Human Resources Committee to know how strong that is on the forefront or if somebody has put forth a bill to that degree. We've discussed it in our education committee because it's similar mm -hmm. from early childcare all the way up. And it is something that's been mentioned, but we do not have yet a specific bill that our committee is working on in terms of um, educational reciprocity, which mm -hmm. is being able to accept uh, credits from, you know, college courses that are done outside of the state, but also just right. looking at how we switch from, you know, if you have a specialty, what you have to continue as your specialty education um, continuously is also pretty laborious and intense as well. Uh, there, there are some, you know, state programs and, and state um mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, it's where you, it's the, the website that you have to go to to upload all of your um, educational requirements mm -hmm. is also challenging. So it's mm -hmm. not just the education itself, it's actually getting the education uploaded into an archaic system as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope, and I do believe, considering that we have two teachers on our education committee, that we will be looking at the educational requirements for sure. Good, good, good. And good it might be, yeah, sometimes what we do in the legislature is, uh, okay, we'll take this one and you take this one. So we'll see, human services right, has right. A, a lot on their plate, so they may pass that buck off to us. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I know that from past conversations we've had together that you have a significant background in being a board member of a child care center, helping to fund and after uh, found, excuse me, an after school program, the community campus in Woodstock. So maybe with that perspective, coupled with the two teachers, um, we can see some progress on your committee on this front. Uh, yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned earlier shifting gears a bit. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the whole question of family leave, which of, co of course came was in a hair's breadth of getting through the last legislative session, and now it's back on the back on the docket. Correct me if I'm wrong. With a with a supermajority uh, in both the House and the Senate, so perhaps a little bit more favorable environment <laughs> for this year. Although, um, uh, you know, no, no, knowing Democrats, they don't all agree. They don't all walk in lockstep with one another. So, or do, or do Republicans, obviously. Um, um, so you may not be able to count on that um, partisan supermajority, but what's what's in the offing for family leave uh, at present? What are you hearing in Montpelier and talking about? 
I certainly hear within the house a strong support of the program. Uh, mm -hmm. It really is a pretty inexpensive insurance plan for a pretty significant amount of time. So mm -hmm. I truly see that employees and employers can both look at the price tag and say, this level of insurance is very inexpensive for what we get. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't, you know, it's a 48 page bill, I think, as it currently stands. And so that mm -hmm. will be intensely scrutinized. Um, over many different committees to make sure that that is the, the best way to do it before it goes over to the Senate. And who knows mm -hmm. how the Senate will, will view it. Um, it's very fascinating to see different priorities. Um, <clears throat> and that's what, you know, we, we're all trying to work together, but um, there are definitely some things that it feels that we don't work together very well on. Um, and mm -hmm. In my four weeks, <laughs> I'm just skimming the surface of those nuanced relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when when I spoke with you uh, just after your election uh, and just before you're taking office, um, I remember you saying that you'd gotten a lot of advice from uh, fellow legislators that during your first term, it's best to sit back and listen and ask questions. And um, I take it that's what you're doing in these first couple of weeks. <laughs> Oh, yes. I mean, that's not to say that I, I don't use my voice more than maybe they No, would, I, understand. I, I definitely yeah. speak up. Um, but yeah. yes, truly, you know, being a good listener is a is the largest part of this job. Because if I don't hear constituents and really hear testimony and hear about, you know, hey, we have brought this up. Paid family medical leave has been on the docket for years and years and years. Here are the roadblocks. If I can't truly listen to that, then I can't form, you know, uh, an organic opinion or bring something to the table. Most things have been thought of before. That's what everyone says. There's no, I no new ideas. And that, that might, that might be true. Um, but I do feel, believe that there's always room for new perspectives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you serving on any other committees besides education? So in the House, you are only sit on one committee. One committee. OK. Um, but we do have caucuses. So right. Um, right. and that is where I uh, I really enjoy the rural caucus because we're in a rural area of, of Vermont. Um, Absolutely. So that's where I, I feel that I want to keep my um, thumb on the pulse of what's happening to, to aid our small communities. Um, you know, in Plymouth, we, we have a town clerk and a town treasurer and the sunset on the folks that are there or the folks that have stepped in to help is very fast approaching. And, you know, we definitely need some help there. So there's always constituent out, outreach and, and town outreach folks in select boards that are saying, hey, can you reach out to government operations and help us do this? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to sort of pay attention to all the things all at the same time. Um, but constituents reaching out to me, letting me know what their concerns are, helps me to go to them, to the folks that can get them the help that they need. Uh, because following all of the different committees is, uh, it's challenging to, to figure out yeah, how, to, how to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I look forward to exploring those, um, particularly those rural issues um, that your con constituents express concerns about in coming weeks here. Um, just to uh, make our viewers and, and uh, readers of the standard uh, fully aware, uh, which, which communities are within your particular house district? Plymouth, Woodstock, and Reading. Okay, great, great. Well, uh, uh, Representative Voss, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Uh, we'll continue to explore issues before the legislature with you every week. Uh, I look forward to continuing the discussion and uh, thanks so much for talking with us today about child care and children and family services issues. Much appreciated. And uh, we'll see you next week. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Thank you.